hello there guys how are you i miss you guys like crazy already but i am super super excited about this fun little thing that we're gonna get to do together over videos but first i want you guys to think for a moment what is something that you have waited so long for where it maybe felt like it took an eternity or maybe that it was never actually going to come. Maybe it was a vacation that you were so excited about and you felt like the day that you're gonna leave just would never actually happen. Or maybe you had a baby sibling or a cousin arriving and you just could not wait. What about the end of the school year when you're just counting down the days when it's summertime? or maybe this year in 2020, it was the opposite and you were counting down the days until you could be back in school with your friends. Or maybe you're even feeling that right now as we've kind of switched back to a, a lot of virtual stuff. For me, every year it was Christmas. I couldn't wait. After Thanksgiving was finished, all I could think about was how I just wanted Christmas to be here, be here already. I've always loved Christmas as long as I can remember. and. I would do these like really specific things to prepare for every single year. You guys probably don't even know <laughs> what this feeling is because I don't think this happens anymore. But every year we'd get in the mail all of these catalogs from all the stores. Toys R Us. I don't even know if Toys R Us exists anymore, but it was a big deal. Target, Best Buy, probably some other things that I can't remember. But I'd have all the catalogs laid out and I would flip through them, getting so excited about all the things that were coming out this year, and I would circle every toy or every gift that I hoped I would get. Not only that though, we'd then put up all our Christmas decorations, so we'd hang up all the ornaments, but my favorite part is we had this little Christmas village. Do any of you guys have that where it has the little houses and the shops, there's like these tiny little trees and even smaller people? We put up some fake snow and we would set it up underneath our tree. And I loved doing it. I loved taking the time to carefully place each little house to create this village. I would imagine what these people were like. I would even play with them as if they were dolls. I just loved that little Christmas village, not only because it was so fun, but because it was a sign that Christmas was coming. And then of course the Christmas party at school, because not only was it fun, but it marked that it was the start of Christmas break. And that meant we were that much closer to it actually being Christmas. Yet it still somehow felt like the day would never come. Have you guys ever felt that feeling before? And maybe for you right now, like most of us, 2020 has felt like the longest year in the history of ever. And we're, we're in a season of waiting because of that. We're waiting and we're hoping that COVID will end and for things to get back to feeling a little bit more normal. See, God's people, the Israelites, they had a similar feeling where they waited and they hoped for something to come for a long time. If we feel like 2020 is the longest year ever, this actually was a long, long time. Some people spent their entire life waiting and hoping and they never got to see it come for themselves. Can you imagine waiting years and years and years for something to come, just hoping that that moment would be here? So we're gonna read a story together. If you guys have your Jesus Storybook Bible, you can go grab it. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you guys along with it um, what we're reading so you can follow along there. But if you have it with you, you can turn to page 144. It's called Operation No More Tears. It looks like this. All right, let's read it together. Operation No More Tears. Do you know what your name means? Well, there was once a man called Isaiah and his name meant God to the rescue. That might sound like a bit of a funny name to you, but it was just the right name for Isaiah because God had a special job for Isaiah. You see, Isaiah's job was to listen to God and then tell people what he heard. Now God let Isaiah know a secret. God was going to mend his broken world. He showed Isaiah his secret rescue plan, Operation No More Tears. This is the message God gave Isaiah. It was like a letter God wrote to his children. Little, dear little flock, you're all wandering away from me like sheep in an open field. You've always been running away from me and now you're lost. You can't find your way back. 
but I can't stop loving you. I will come to find you, so I'm sending you a shepherd to look after you with, and love you, to carry you home to me. You've been stumbling around like people in a dark room, but in, into the darkness, a bright light will shine. It will chase away all the shadows like sunshine. A little baby will be born, a royal son. His mommy will be a young girl who doesn't have a husband. His name will be Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. He's one of King David's children's children's children, the Prince of Peace. Yes, someone is going to come and rescue you, but he won't be who anyone expects. He will be a king, but he won't live in a palace and he won't have lots of money. He'll be poor, he'll be a servant, but this king will heal the whole world. He will be a hero. He'll fight for his people and rescue them from their enemies, but he won't have big armies and he won't fight with swords. He'll make the blind see. He'll make the lame leap like deer. He'll make everything the way it was always meant to be. But people will hate him and they won't listen to him. He will be like a lamb. He will suffer and die. It's the secret rescue plan we made from before the beginning of the world. It's the only way to get you back but he won't stay dead. I'll make him alive again. And one day when he comes back to rule forever, the mountains and trees will dance and sing for joy. The earth will shout out loud. His fame will fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Everything sad will come untrue. Even death is going to die and he will wipe away every tear from every eye. Yes, the rescuer will come. Look for him, watch for him, wait for him, he will come. I promise. Did you guys know that there are seasons in the church calendar? There's a church calendar. Not all churches follow it and that's okay, but there are a lot that do. And today in that church calendar, we begin the season of Advent. The word Advent, it means coming or arrival. Do you guys have any guesses of what the people that are following Advent, what is coming? What arrival are they waiting for? If you said Jesus's birth, you're right. I grew up in a church that followed this church calendar. And once Advent would start every single year, we did this for all the years I can remember, they would set up the nativity scene in the church. It would be in the front. And this was like the one time of the year that I really wanted to sit in the front because I wanted to get the closest look on this nativity scene. And some were like really small, right? Like we had some in our house that were like this big, but these were like big, pieces of the nativity scene. And each week, as we got closer to Christmas, Jesus's birth, they would be moving the pieces to follow along with the story. And so every week, Joseph and Mary, they would be a little bit closer to the stable. And I knew what that meant. I knew that we were getting closer and closer to celebrating Jesus's birth. And I would get so excited to watch this happen. And so as I was reflecting on that and just kind of thinking back to what a happy memory that is for me, I decided that this year in Advent, we are going to create our own nativity scene. And so I have emailed out to your families this document and it has all the nativity scenes can look different, but it has different elements of it. We've got the animals, the stable, the angel, baby Jesus this weird little baby Jesus. You guys can use this if you want, but I'm not going to use it because it's very confusing. But that baby Jesus <laughs> looks a little bit more as expected. And so what we're going to do is you guys are going to get to be creative. And each week we're going to add different elements of our nativity scene to our own nativity set. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to, I think, hang them in our window, either like take a stick, and tie them to string and hang them from there or just hang it so it's like kind of like a little shadow in our window but and you can do that as well or if you'd like you can get creative and do something else with it you could put magnets on the back of them and put them all in your fridge you could um put them like in a shoe box and like kind of tape them up so that they're all their own like they like stand up so it's like an actual nativity scene that you might have in your house already. Or if you think of something different, you can totally do that. There's no wrong way to do this. You can even print them at different sizes. Like you could print one that's really big so that the stable would actually fit all of them in it. You guys can get 
as creative with it as you want. But each week we're gonna be adding a new piece to it. And so today, as we were talking about how the Israelite people, they were waiting and they were hoping for the savior to come. Um, I'm gonna add my stable and my animals to my nativity scene. If you wanna do it differently, that's okay. They're gonna kind of follow along with the story, but there's no wrong way to do it. But don't, you gotta save some for the end. So, so this week I'm gonna add the stable and the animals to it as they are waiting. Um, they didn't even know that they were gonna be the home of the savior, but they were waiting for that to happen. So thank you guys so much for following along. I'm gonna send out a video each week um, of Advent as we kind of journey through this together. If you guys wanna read the stories as a family, and I won't be offended if you don't do it with me, but I just want to give you guys all that you need to celebrate the season of Advent, of waiting and hoping for the light to come, the light of the world, Jesus. So thank you guys, and I'm gonna pray, and then you guys can get brainstorming of how you wanna set up your nativity scene this year. Father, thank you that you are with us in the waiting, whether it's we're waiting for COVID to end or we're waiting for something entirely different. As people, we know what this means very well. And sometimes it's painful and just really, really hard. But the good news is that there's hope that you give us hope and we see that in this season of Advent as the Israelites, they waited for the hope of a savior. So help us to just see more of you and see more of your son in this season, God. We love you and we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. All right, bye guys.